Are you an investigative professional? Have you heard about the investigatorstoolbox.com? Check out this exclusive online community for networking, learning, and data resource management. The Toolbox is a one-stop shop for all your investigative needs. Check out our robust collection of forums, our comprehensive learning page, and our expansive library of OSINT research tools. We've just released an app for both iOS and Android, so you can access the site seamlessly right off your phone. We have also partnered with some amazing companies like Crosstracks, Delpoint, IRB, ScopeNow, the Hetherington Group, PI Magazine, PI Gear, Merlin Locate Services, Parabin, the PI Institute of Education, and so many more. They're offering over $1,250 worth of discounts and benefits exclusively to community members today. Use code PIP201836 and save 10% on your membership. That's www.investigators-toolbox.com. Cross tracks case management system. That is what we are talking about today. Are you using a case management system? What are you waiting for? If you don't use a case management system, you really need to look into implementing that into your business regimen. I've been at it with cross tracks now a little over a year, and it's just been a game changer for my business. They are SOC 2 certified, SOC 2 Type 2 certified. If you don't know what that means, it means that they're encryption system is second to none and you have to go through a whole screening process to figure out uh, if you can even qualify for that and they have so you know with certainty your data is being protected i don't think there's another case management system out there that offers that same ability to have the SOC 2 type 2 certification as you guys know i've been uh, you know singing the praises of cross tracks and uh, i really believe in this product and i believe you should check it out Contact Brad, contact Pat, uh, one of the team members over there, and see if it's right for you. Cross Tracks case management system, check it out today. Welcome to this week's episode. If you've been to an investigator conference, there's a good chance you know our guest today. We're welcoming Judy Shea from JT Palmer and Associates. Our topic today is bank searches and the GLBA. We attack this tough topic and try to shed some light on permissible purposes for bank searches. Let's jump right in with Judy Shea and your host, private investigator, Matt Spare. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. This is Matt Spare, your host. Today, uh, I have the honor and the privilege to interview a good friend of mine, uh, Judy Shea from J.T. Palmer & Associates. Judy, I want to welcome you to the program. Thank you very much for having me, Matt. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, it's great to finally get you on. I know we've been talking about it for a super long time, and uh, you're, you're, you're a shy one. <laughs> the, first, the first time I asked you, I think, was probably when I first started. Uh, it's been two years now I'm doing this. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Yeah. And, and uh, Judy was like, no, I'm not doing this. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, you know, COVID hits and now everyone's doing everything online. It's a lot easier. It's, it's, you get more comfortable and you got a high def camera now. So it's all good. <laughs> Well, again, congratulations on two years. Yeah, right? yeah, I was just thinking about that the other day. So I wow. like a week or two, it's going to be two years. So that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. I think by the time this episode airs, it'll be just about two years. Um, right. So you got to start somewhere. So uh, no, it's all good. And thank you. And I've actually, I mean, I've known you for for quite some time. Uh, I think yeah. we we probably started hanging out though at at some events. It was probably. Uh, I want to say in Vegas. I'm trying to remember which, which <laughs> of, it was Cali. I think it was Cali in Vegas where we were hanging out. I remember a little bit of Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it was a lot of fun. I think that was where we met, and it was yeah. a Cali conference. Yeah. And you actually taught an amazing class. Yeah. I remember sitting in on that and uh, learned a lot from your class. Yeah, that I appreciate great. that. And it's funny what I was teaching about, you can't really do it anymore. So it shows you <laughs> it shows you how technology is awesome. Well, thanks for telling me now. Yeah, Gosh. yeah, no. yeah. You, you had to get in it while you could. And that, yeah, I mean, that's the nature of the business and the nature of the business of what you do too, uh, which we're going to dive into in a little bit. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about your background, right? Because I knew you before Cali, I mean, way back. So yeah. JT Palmer Associates, um, tell me what that company is, what you guys do, and what you specialize in. Yeah, so JT Palmer and Associates is kind of a makeshift group of individuals who we had all worked in different areas for different companies 
And we saw that there was a need for, we just thought that, I guess that things could have been done a little better, a little more fine tuned, that it was more beneficial to the investigator, mm -hmm. as well as those that are doing the work, such as, you know, the researchers behind the scenes. And we were able to kind of come together and go pick out the best of the best. Who is the best at asset searches? Who's the best at utility searches? Who's the best at employment searches? And it was just kind of a group of us going, hey, let's make our own team and, you know, just start it from the ground up. And actually, August of next year will be 10 years for JT wow. Palmer. That is oh, so yeah. it was pretty exciting. I remember being scared to death making that leap. But just like you, yeah. you got to do it. And I don't there is a one day that I regret what we've done. I don't think anybody on our team does. Our team is still original. We've brought on a few more people, That's but great. the original people are still part of our team. I can't believe I've known you for more than 10 years. That's I know. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Because yeah. I, I remember. But we haven't changed a bit, I'm sure. Yeah. No, you don't look a day older. Um, you either, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> a little less hair, a little more gray. That's about it. So. <laughs> uh, who's counting? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and you constantly yell at me for these things too, that, Hey, we do more than just bank searches, right? I get that from you all the time. I never, I know you, you got to remember that, that you do uh, all that stuff. And I can remember probably about four years ago where I hired you guys to do a phone break for me and it was a really weird situation. So basically what was going on was there was a, I don't know if it was a politician or a businessman, somebody was doing something with somebody they shouldn't have been doing it with. Right. And that particular person um, decided to extort this, this individual. Right. I uh, do remember this. Thing. Yeah. It, it, well, yeah, you'll remember the more and more I tell about it, the more you're going to remember because okay. it, it gets, it gets crazy. Right. So this particular mm -hmm. person was extorting and I had a, a, an investigator I knew that was stumped and he's like, listen, I got a $3,000 retainer on this thing. He's like, if you can solve this problem for me, he goes, I'm going to give you half of the retainer. He goes, let's see what you can do. So I called Judy uh, after doing all my regular phone breaks and I wasn't getting anything. I said, Hey, can you help me out with this? Right? So <laughs> this extorter, was a she or he or we don't know <laughs> we don't know what this this person used to be one thing and then they were another we'll just leave it at that oh, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah so it was like that was that aspect to it and this person thought they were funny right so we ended up doing the break uh or at least started to do the break i think i think i'd no you got the correct person but the break that i ran on it I got a return back and it ended up being the name of the public defender in the county where the guy was uh, once arrested. So he thought he was a smart ass to go and, and uh, you know, take this guy's name and I'm going to get a, uh, a burner phone in the name of the public defenders, which is what he did. Right? So <laughs> initially, I'm just like, oh, my God, the, <laughs> the public defender is extorting this guy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't the case. It wasn't the right person, right? Oh, I, yeah. I go to you guys. You guys do an incredible break on it. We find this this person who uh, ended up being from New Orleans or somewhere down down there. And they got a door knock, you know, from my client. And with a, hey, knock it off. And oh. uh, we solved the problem. And, uh, yeah, I got, I got to have that retainer, which is crazy. Nice. <laughs> so, Nice, nice. So, what did I make off of that? I don't think it was near that. No, it wasn't near that. No, you charged me whatever it is you charged, and I, I paid it gladly. <laughs> we do. We uh -huh. have a, a flat fee for what we do. We don't yeah. increase because it's a million dollar judgment. We don't do any of that. It's, oh, it is I, what it is. I hate people that do that. I got to tell yeah. you, like, I replace so many investigators in New York that do that nonsense. Um, mm -hmm. where an attorney would be like, yeah, I hired this investigator and I paid him like $4,000 to get a witness statement and he never got the statement. You know, he spent $4,000 of his time just going back and forth and knocking on doors and doing, and he's like, I would have never paid that guy to go that many times out there. Yeah. I can't use him wow. anymore. You know, you got the, no. so. and it's, 
I, you know, it's one of those deals. Do you want to stay busy? I'd rather stay busy. We, like I said, we haven't raised our prices since I think 2016 mm. was the last time we raised our prices. Everybody's raising their prices saying, well, we're affected by COVID. I'm thinking, I don't think that that has really affected yeah. what we're doing in our office. Yeah. So, uh, but it is, it's, uh, we have people out there that are just, you know, well, I got to tell you, it's funny, uh, it's funny you're saying that because I had lunch with an attorney probably about two or three months ago, and it was a, um, a court reporter service that was starting to tack on all these like crazy fees, you know, post COVID fees to, to everything. And the attorney was like super pissed. And he's like, I get it. People trying to recoup money, but this is like a little ridiculous. And he's like, I'm not going to use this court reporter anymore. So it, it you got to be careful with that stuff because it can backfire. Yeah, it does. And I would rather be consistently busy than do three things in a year because you were able to scam somebody out of yeah. charging them more. So no, we're definitely in the repeat business business. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I don't like doing one and done's. I don't like when people call me, you know, like, this is why I don't really work with the public. I just work mostly with attorneys because I, I, would like to have another case, you know, like the yeah. like you public, it's one and done, you know, it's like you can solve their problem. They're moving on. So. Uh, yeah. We don't, we don't work with the general public at all either. So we never have from the beginning. It's always been our list of clientele is uh, private investigators, our biggest clientele, then attorneys, bail bondsmen, and of course, judgment collectors. Sure. So. Sure. So you, you do the speaking circuit too, right? So you're, yeah, by the time this airs, we would have been hanging out in person in Arizona. Uh, I think yeah, be, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully uh, you, you're not incarcerated somewhere. <laughs> or well, me for that matter. The good thing is I know a, a few bail bondsmen that might be able to help. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not only clients, they're uh, <laughs> saviors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we go back and forth on who the client is. Sure. Sure. Um, no, so that's good. So you're, you, you do have some speaking engagements, right? You're, you're speaking in Arizona. Correct. Where else uh, are you going to be uh, going forward? Um, well, I'm going to see you in Mesa, Arizona at the Arizona Association Con Annual Conference. Right. That's the weekend. This airs, we will have already been there. Yeah, we would have already been there, yes. Yep. Then the next weekend will be in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I haven't been a part I've never been a part of the Arizona Association or the California Association, or Colorado. I'm sorry, yeah. the Colorado Association. And I'm really, really looking forward to meeting those people, getting to, you know, see what they're all about, getting involved and also supporting them. We also, yeah. you know, we sponsor and support all these associations with yeah. them, right. you know, it keeps our industry going and keeps yep. us abreast of the laws. Each state, you know, could be a little different. And by the way, did you see that California, that the Kelly Association and NCISS, they really pushed for, um, a, a, it was about the, I can't remember the, the bill, bill with criminal records. Yes. Yeah, the, yeah. About SB, the criminal whatever. Records. Yeah. I don't yeah. I, I 791 or something like yes. that. Yes. Francie Fran Kohler and, and the cohorts. Oh my gosh. California. Those people yeah. work tirelessly. They're rock stars. Yeah. They are the true rock stars of our yeah. industry. Yeah. I mean, you get Frank Huntington, you yeah. know, yeah. all of those guys. They're yeah. just yep. the Frank Francie is unbelievable. Yep. Kudos to them. And what an amazing feat to get that stopped yeah. at the floor. So so to bring folks up to speed here, really what was going on there was uh criminal records. They were looking to uh, basically expunge them. Um after four years and uh, making criminal background checks pretty much impossible. Uh, so Callie put out a call to action a couple months ago, uh, letter writing campaigns and really, really identified that as being a big problem uh, for investigators. You know, everything starts in California and then it bleeds into other states. And, um, you know, kudos to Callie because they were able to, uh, to really knock that bill out and say, uh-uh, no, not going to happen. So um, good job, Kelly. Yeah, that, that was amazing. Really proud of them. So we go to Colorado and then uh, we're going to take part 
in the Florida Association. Um, the Fally Group is putting on, uh, it's Fally U, it's some more training, and then we're going to participate in the Fally Boot Camp, which is for new investigators, students. It's people just starting to get their feet wet in the industry or people who even want to learn about the industry. Sure. That's what the boot camp is all about. And it's, it's amazing. I think the Fowley's done a great job and they're growing like crazy as well. Really yeah. proud of them. Yeah. Then we'll, I'll see you at FAPI. At love, absolutely love that team. Yeah. Uh, they've just done a great thing. Yeah. Ari's done that amazing works. with it. Uh, it's just, um, we've been really blessed at where we've gone, the associations that we've been a part of. Uh, we haven't left. We met them and we've stayed with them throughout the, ever since we've met them. And we really do what we can to support them. Sure. So, and they support us as well. So the, um, I, I do have a question for you because um, I know this was across the boards the other day with regards to Colorado no longer having their licensee requirement. Does that affect JT Palmer and, and your uh, ability to give um, the research that you do to basically people that aren't required to have licenses now? What, what's the policy it, for you guys? It does make us a little nervous mm -hmm. what we do because normally we, you know, you fill out your new client forms, with that, it has your license number, the state you're licensed in. We're able to go in and vet that, see that you're uh, active. And then, of course, we look up, you know, anything we can on you to make sure that there's no um, violations filed, things like that. Because what we're dealing with is pretty sensitive information. Absolutely. And you have to make sure that you're giving it to the appropriate person yeah. who will be using it in the appropriate manner. Yeah, when the music stops, you want to have a chair, right? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. Um, and so it just makes vetting them a little more difficult. Sure. But, you know, we, we are able to go see that they have a website. Uh, you know, thank goodness for social media and open source intelligence. We're able to do a little more research on them. But again, we have to make sure that they are an agency. Yeah, I saw uh, what they're recommending in the PPIAC, what they're recommending to their members is uh, if you do business in another state, like get licensed in another state. So yes, you're not licensed in Colorado. Colorado doesn't require it anymore, but carry a license in another state you do business with is, is a, a good practice. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Oh, I didn't see that. That makes sense. That's a good idea. But some, the majority of the people that are in it today went through that process when they were not licensed for a while. And then it was mandated that you are licensed. Right. And I think that they're doing a, some of the people there, some of the investigators there are going above and beyond to yeah. make it a reputable business and show that they are doing their due diligence and, you know, that it, they're a legitimate operation. Yeah. I mean, my, uh, my guest list of investigators from Colorado is littered all over <laughs> two years worth of guests. <laughs> so many of them are from Colorado. There, there's some really great investigators out there. I'm so bummed. I'm not going to make that Colorado meeting. Yeah, I wish that um, you could be there, but it's, yeah. the, it's the following weekend. I mean, well, you know what it is? I'm going to be in Pennsylvania, like a few days earlier. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. If I, if I, go to every single event that's out there, the locks are going to get changed on my door at home. And I, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, I mean, I'm the only one with the key. So <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're good. You're I don't okay. even have, I have no animals. I don't even have a goldfish. There's nothing that depends their survival on me. So well, I'm see, that's not 100% true. You've got a golf cart. I, I remember hearing about <laughs> this golf cart getting lended out and going all over the place. So I know I think the the, uh, the golf cart has seen more miles with <laughs> others than it has with me. So, yeah, well, well you know, you're out at all these events, you know, and and to, to speak on that, Judy, one of the things I really appreciate appreciate about you and, and what you do is that you're there. You know, you, not only do you support the industry, but you actually go to the events uh, and it, you, you see that 
so so few people that do what you do actually get out there um and you know like you and i are pals because we see each other all the time when we go to these events right uh, exactly. but but yeah I, you know somebody who really understands our industry um and you do because you go to these events and you're you're seeing things right you're sitting in on present like a dumb presentation i'm doing a few years ago you know you're learning something right and um you know you're networking and you're 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 keeping your finger on the pulse of what's going on in in, in the industry and that's super important right well i i appreciate that thank you um it's it's important i'm if you're passionate about what you do as i am you want to be there you want to make sure that people can put a face with the name sure. you want to know that i'm accountable for whatever we provide you. It's not, I'm not putting it off on my staff or anybody else. It's gonna come back on me yeah. and I will take care of it. Yeah. You can count on me. And it's important that they know that I'm genuine about that. I'm that yeah. way with my family, with my friends. And let's face it, as you and I know, the majority of my clients have become my friends as yeah. well. Yeah, and yeah, uh, we all do everything we can to see each other and hang out. Yeah. And if we go, as we did through COVID, two years or better without seeing each other, as soon as we see each other, we haven't missed a beat. Yeah. We pick up the phone, we check on each other. Um, and it's important on top of that to go to these conferences because you really do learn something. Sure. As I sat in on your class and was amazed. I mean, I remember some of the cases that you brought up and I still think of today. They were so interesting. And I was like, dang, he's yeah. awesome. He's all over the place. And he solved that. Uh, I was really impressed. But as you say, laws change, things yeah. change. Yeah. And it's our job as being kind of, I'm in charge of my company. I know you are with yours. So it's important for us to do the best we can to stay on top of the ever-changing laws right. and rulings yep. and acts. Yep. And it's different each state. And, you know, we just have to do the best we can. Another, I'll give another kudos that involves Francie as well, but NCISS. If you guys support anything, support NCISS because they're the ones putting our lobbyists out there. They're yep. keeping all of us informed on laws changing. I think Wes Bearden's in the president of that now, yep. and he's done an amazing job at keeping yep. everybody informed. Uh, I, it's just an amazing group. And I think that it's important for all of us, if we're really true, truly doing our job, and if we're passionate about our job, then we need to educate ourselves yeah. as frequently and as as often as we can. And one of the best ways is to be at the conferences. Absolutely. And um, speaking of NCISS, they're going to have a, a town hall meeting in October, uh, yeah. which we'll start putting the information out on that. And that's open to anybody. You don't have to be an NCISS member to, to attend the town hall. And that's a great way to get a pulse on on what's going on in the country as far as data privacy, uh, the PRO Act is another big issue, uh, but we're not going to dive into all that uh, yeah. today. Um, it's not the reason here. Um, I just, yeah, they're, it's important that we uh, do that. So Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're really awesome. Um, so we'll have information on that. But I think some of the things you were talking about, uh, about laws changing and staying on top of things, I think that ties in with today's topic. So uh, we're going to take a break here. And then when we come back, I really want to dive into that. Uh, the Graham Leach Biley Act. Uh, you are uh, the resident expert on that, or at least you know more about it than I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> I use uh, the term loosely. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, we're going to take a break here, and uh, when we come okay. back, we're going to we're going to great. About. I look forward to it. Thanks so everybody, sit tight, and we'll be right back. Are you overwhelmed with your current case log? Could you use some help with your skip trace assignments? With Merlin Locate Services, rather than adding staff, you can add an entire skip trace department of licensed private investigators who specialize in skip tracing. Check out MerlinLocate.com today. When you work with Merlin Locate Services, you bring on a valuable experience and trusted extension to your team. 
Need the best insurance coverage out there? Check out SIIS Insurance. Make your insurance purchasing process a breeze by dealing with the leading PI industry experts. All filings for your state PI license are handled directly by their staff. Certificates of coverage to your clients are fulfilled the same day as requested. If you work armed, no worries as they always include firearms liability in their coverage. Coverage can be expanded to cover executive protection, consulting liability, guard operations, and for cyber liability inexpensively. Best of all, be sure to indicate on the application that you're a regular PI Perspective listener or Investigator Toolbox subscriber as amazing discounts apply. So make sure you take advantage today. Visit Security Investigators Insurance Solution, SIISinsurance.com. Check out the PI Institute of Education at PIinstitute.com. Since 1989, Kelly Riddle has been teaching on subjects such as surveillance, nursing home investigations, insurance fraud, domestic investigations, hidden assets, and accident scene investigations. The PI Institute of Education is a featured learning partner in the investigatorstoolbox.com. So check out the free content on the site, then visit the Institute for more great savings on additional classes. Want full data access without a site inspection? IRB Search gives you full social security numbers, dates of birth, up-to-date contact info, and so much more without the inconvenience or cost of an inspection. As an added bonus, you can access IRB data on any device in any location. You'll always have the best data anytime, anywhere. Visit irbsearch.com and use exclusive promo code PIPOD2021 for a free trial and 100 credits. Offer available for new and returning customers. The next issue for PI Magazine is on its way. Make sure you check out all the great content available in this special edition. Available online or via hard copy. And welcome back to PI Perspectives. This is Matt Spare, your host. Today I'm just uh, having a, a good old time here with a good old friend of mine, uh, Judy Shea. So Judy, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Okay, so we're going to get down to business here. Brass tax, uh, the Graham Leach Bliley Act. It is uh, something that everybody's heard the that name, but I, I don't think uh, most of us don't really understand exactly what it is. And we're gonna we're gonna demystify it today, and uh, you know, talk about some research and uh, asset search and, and things like that. So uh, let's jump in. All right. So Graham Leach Bliley Act, otherwise everybody knows as the GLBA. Uh, has scared a lot of people away from things when really it's not that bad. I mean, it's a, it's boring, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's, it's more for financial institutions than it is for the investigator. Somehow the investigator has become terrified thinking that this whole thing was written for them. And it wasn't, it was writ written for the financial institutions actually. Mm -hmm. So, so what was going on that the financial institutions needed to be? I mean, obviously, part of that is pretexting. But why would a financial institution pretext for like to be competitive and steal clients from other well, the, banks? Or? The pretexting doesn't come into for the financial institutions. The pretexting comes into it states in the in the GLBA that you cannot obtain somebody's financial information by pretexting. And anybody out there who is new or anything and doesn't know what pretexting is, it's all, it's calling or it could be by calling, <clears throat> excuse me, it could be by mail, it could be by going into the financial institution, uh, emails, anything like that, but where you are representing yourself as somebody other than who you truly are. Right, intentional deception. That is pretexting. So. Yeah. It states in the GLBA that you cannot pretext to obtain somebody's fin financial information. I can't call Bank of America and pretend to be Matt Spare and say, yeah, I want to check my bank balance. Illegal. Right. The GLBA came around in 1999 under President Clinton's administration because the financial institutions 
have been selling our information forever. That's why we get, you get all the junk mail. You qualify for this credit card, lower your car insurance, uh, all those kind of things. It's because those companies that are sending you the junk mail have purchased your financial information and your credit information. Yep. That's why they can offer you these things. People with really, you know, who've hit hardships, and I'm sure it's happening right now, and they get the things, rebuild your credit. How do you think they know you need to rebuild your credit? Because they purchased your information. So back in 1999, uh, they decided, Congress decided that the consumer needed to be aware that the financial institutions are selling your information. Okay. They needed to explain to you who they're selling it to, why they're selling it, how they're protecting your information. And um, they, this is the kicker. They have to give you a spot in there and this is the terminology to opt out, OPT, opt out. So I come in and I'm going to, it could be, we'll, we'll go with, I'm going to open a checking account. And we sit down at the table. I'm going through with the gentleman who's uh, working for the bank, who's going to help me open up a checking account. And we go through the paperwork and it says, and he'll go sign here, initial here, sign and date here, initial, initial, initial. Right. And they just kind of breeze through it. And we as consumers sit there and go, well, I don't want to be embarrassed by sitting here for the next 45 minutes reading through all this paperwork. And the guy works for the bank. I'm going to trust him. So I sign everything and I initial exactly where he tells me to. 10 minutes later, I walk out and I have a checking account there. Everything that you did has to do with your privacy, with the privacy of your accounts, how they're gonna handle it. And in there, you initialed them, you gave them permission to sell your information. So you also got something else out of it though. You probably got like a toaster or a microwave. Oh, well, right? yeah. And nowadays, <laughs> now I think it might be an Instapot or something. Really? Oh, <laughs> so uh, I just need the recipe book for that. There you go. <laughs> of course, yeah. um, you got to open the savings account to get the, the recipe book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they don't explain to you. I guarantee they're not sitting there going, look, what we're going to do with this paperwork, and once you open the account, we're going to make money off of your money, but right. we're also going to make money off of your information. Sure. And we're going to sell your information to all these people who are going to start sending you all kinds of crap mail and making you all kinds of offers. And I mean, it's, it's the way of the times. It's how everybody's making men, making level money. marketing. Yes. It's <laughs> all marketing. It's all about yeah. the almighty dollar. Yep. But, and I'm telling everybody, you have the right when you open and it's it, when you buy a car, when you finance your home, when you do a credit card, if you want to finance that Instapot, then I'm telling you, they have to explain this to you sure. and they skim over it and they have to give you, there is a little box that you can check that will let you opt out and they cannot sell your information. Yeah. But I tell you there I've probably only talked to a very small handful of people who have ever known that. They're like, yeah. oh, no. No, it's definitely no, true. No, no, There's so, no way. They're not so, selling my information. So let, let's take a turn here. So let's, let's say um, you're an investigator. You get a call from a personal injury attorney that says, I've got a judgment for $1.5 million. I need a bank account, right? Or, or, they, or let's give scenario number two. Scenario number two is, I've got a motor vehicle accident with $1.2 million worth of injuries. I haven't started my action yet. I want the bank account information. Let's talk about those two scenarios. All right. Well, first one, judgment. You're going to have everything in place. That's going, because then we go back to 
It's not illegal to obtain financial information as long as you're obtaining it legally and not pretexting or doing some other shady stuff. Um, but in order to even obtain it legally, if, if somebody like me is obtaining it legally for you, you as the investigator, you have to have what's called permissible purpose. Mm -hmm. According to the FCRA, permissible purpose is mm -hmm. your reason for obtaining the information. Right. And it's FCRA is a big word, but it's like simple. And the FCRA is a Fair Credit Reporting Act. Okay. Yes. And um, so in judgment collections, you've already gone to court, you've obtained, the judge has signed that you are awarded this money. There's all kinds of paperwork signed. You've already, I'm sure that if you have a judgment, you've already come into a contract with the person you're getting a judgment against. And so you have all the signed documents. They're signed by probably the person, the subject that you need the bank account information on. And it's also signed by a judge. Right. So there's your permissible purpose um, in most scenarios. Uh, again, I'm not an attorney, so I'm right. Yeah, yeah. Let's that that preface this. Though. Like, this <laughs> isn't legal advice, people. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. So let me start off with that. I'm not yeah. an attorney, but I have played one before, and yeah. you know. yeah. And so you're going that you already have permissible purpose. So mm -hmm. we're going to go. We're going to do everything we can. To, lay, to locate all assets, whether they be bank accounts, brokerage accounts, savings accounts, checking accounts, um, property, vehicles, cars, trains, planes, whatever somebody owns that you can set your, you know, put your, tie your judgment against to collect your, um, on that judgment. So that's the first scenario. Easy peasy, yep. right? Then the second scenario, you're going to come into a little bit more of a technical area. You want to find out if it's worth going after and suing. Um, you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to make sure your, your paperwork is accurate. And I could help you with that to make sure that legally you have permissible purpose to obtain information. People want to call up and they're, you know, they'll say, well, I think my wife is hiding money or something. And I'm sorry, you don't have permissible purpose in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. You, there has to be some other scenarios. So that take place. Right. And that's, I think that's one of the things that we really got to be careful of because um, ignorance is not innocence, right? So, Correct. Uh, <laughs> uh, the government doesn't want to hear that. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> that's not going to work. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, which yeah. is why, you know, you need to attend these conferences and you need to, you know, network and you need to be, meet with people that um, have contacts with Judy and say, you need to talk to Judy because, you know, you're going to make sure that, uh, yes, you're going to get the information, but you're also going to do it in a way that's not going to get you in trouble later on. Right. And that's really. Yeah. And, and if we can't do it in a legal fashion, we're, we're going to tell you, sorry, yeah. we can't, you know, we tried uh we ran into some roadblocks and we would have to cross that line to obtain it and we don't do that and we're very open up front about that and we let you know uh you know we're not going we're not going to cross that line so. yeah and i think one of the other things that helps is is the methodology of, of knowing like what was done not every thing like spelled out, but it's like, here's the type of research that we did on this. Cause, cause when we go back to our clients, our attorneys, and we get like no hits, it's a lot easier for us to sell them on the idea of yes, the due diligence was done and not just handing them a, a piece of paper that says no hit on it. <laughs> like, here you go. Good luck, Charlie. You know, like it, it, being able to show like, okay, I did have a professional do this and I, and they did do everything they possibly could and you know here's the steps that they took or the places that they checked right that's much better than no hit sorry charlie yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly and yeah we and we'll always work with you that's one of the things that my team when we started it was always always going to be about quality not quantity mm -hmm. so we have it just happens 
frequently, unfortunately, we'll, we will say, yeah, Joe Schmo has, you know, $8,000 sitting at Wells Fargo. And this is where you could serve your judgment. They go, serve the judgment. Wells Fargo says, sorry, and sorry, not picking on Wells Fargo. Just, this is just a case scenario. Right. Wells Fargo says, sorry, there's no account here under that person's name and social security number. You come back to us and say, Wells Fargo said no account at no, no additional cost because this is just who we are. We are all about customer service. We will go back and we will do everything that we can to get as much evidence of that account that we could obtain legally mm -hmm. to give you to take back to Wells Fargo and say, mm, I think you're wrong. I think you might have missed something because yep. here's more evidence of the account. Yeah, and that's a problem. That, and that happens. So. It does. Sometimes people just want to get, you know, the paper off their desk. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, loosen the workload. Um, we see that happening every now and then. So, yeah, it, I'm sure that that happens uh, and being able to to do that. So let's talk about some of the other things besides bank account searches. Right. Um, okay. Securities um, um, lock boxes are another thing. Um, and there's all different types of searches. I know somebody recently was asking about life insurance. Um, what do you know about yeah. life insurance? And we, um, we don't really do that much with life insurance. Uh, back in the day, we're, we had someone that was helping us do that. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of steered away from that. We do with like vehicle insurance, um, uh, homeowner's insurance. Let's say there's a dog bite and... The owner said, yeah, I'll pay for your medical bills. But then you go and you get stitched up and six months later, he still hasn't reimbursed. Right. You need to know who their homeowner's insurance was. We can usually assist with that in that yeah. area. Yeah, so. that's always hit or miss too. Because it, 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 in doing that research, it's it's so difficult. You know, yeah. and it's and sometimes like when you get it, you're like, yay, you're like I'm the man, you know. And I, I like in New York, we're spoiled we're absolutely hundred percent spoiled in New York when it comes to DMV, you know, it's like, Oh, you want to know who, you know, who's insuring this car. Okay. Give me five minutes. I go online. Do, 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 do. Here we go. It's all state. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> Not many States are like that. I think maybe there's seven in, in, in the United States that actually have updated um, vehicle insurance information. I remember that somebody from Texas uh, just last week was like, Hey, can you run a play for me? Yeah, sure. No problem. I'm like, do you want the um, insurance too? <laughs> You can do that. I'm like, yeah, I can do that. You want the name of their firstborn? <laughs> exactly. I mean, we can do that too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, just being able to do that. And that's, that's the thing. Every state is different and you need to um, work with somebody who understands what the rules and, and the regulations are, uh, yeah. especially when it comes to privacy. And man, this is it. That is a hot potato. You know, the Data Privacy Act coming next year, we're going back to NCISS and talking about that stuff. Like, this is real. You know, this is an election year. People are going to want to get elected. And what's what's a good platform to run on? Hey, big business is stealing your data. You know, I'm going to keep that from happening, right? Yeah. Would and you vote do. for that they person? Do. I'd vote for that person. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, so it, it's a real it's issue. A, again, kudos to NCISS for keeping us abreast of what's, happening. Some of us would never even know if we didn't, you know, if we weren't told by them, who could really stay on top of all that stuff? Yeah. It, it'd be, it's a full-time job and that's what they and, do. And it is, and it's a non-paying job, which is something that you respect even more. So like I'm, oh. I'm, on, the, I'm on the board for them and NCISS and, uh, you know, I see what Andrea Roscoe has done. I, it, you know, in, in my time on the board, I see what Wes has done. I know what Lisa Turley is doing as she's next in line to go. And I'm like, wow, these people are dedicated, <laughs> you know, they really are on top and dedicated. Of unfortunately, almost, I mean, we thank them, but there's no way for us to repay what they do. No. And it's a non, non paying gig, you know, it's like, and, and it, it is the heart, the absolute heart of our industry. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Um, Okay, so we're going to wind down here. This was great, Judy. I really appreciate it. You know, just coming on and giving a tease and talking about this stuff a little bit. I encourage folks, if you want to know more, uh, get in touch with Judy um, or attend a conference that she's speaking at and really 
learn more about this stuff. How do folks get a hold of you if they want to know more? Um, you could go to our website at www.jtpalmerassociates.com. You can email me directly at judy at jtpalmerassociates.com. You can call our 800 number at 800-808-0078. And on everything on my website, on our brochures everywhere, my emails, you could also call my cell phone directly. If you have questions, you need assistance, trying to do utilities, employments, whatever, give me a call on my cell phone at 817-894-3539. Almost got it. From awesome. Me. And if you're getting in touch with Judy, do not ask for Mr. Palmer. There is no Mr. Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Mr. There Palmer. Is no Mr. Palmer. And the J does not stand for Judy. Judy no. <laughs> is there a, but that's a whole nother podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meet me at a conference. I'll we'll have a glass of wine and I'll tell you the story. <laughs> you tell me the story. Fantastic. Well, Judy, this was a long time running and uh, I, I told you it would be painless. So I hope it was painless for you. Um, oh, it was. You made it. You made it easy for those of you that know. The only reason I even speak, get up and speak, and do presentations at conferences, is because it needed to be done. And I had somebody say, "Please educate them yeah. on these laws because they're afraid they're going to break it if they get bank information." Yeah. And this is not something I love doing. I love doing what I do in my office with my staff and working with the investigators sure. and attorneys. I do not enjoy this. And that's why it's taken two years for Matt. So you did make it painless. Good. Thank you. And uh, we're here to help. I mean, give us a call. Yeah. So. Checks in the mail. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. And Thanks again, me. congratulations on your anniversary. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you everybody for listening. You guys are awesome. And you know, supporting the businesses that support the the podcast too is, is really great too. We, we really appreciate that. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, and we'll catch everybody next Monday on the next show. All um, right. See you in Arizona. <laughs> we were in Arizona. Right? Yeah, we were in Arizona. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks everyone. Take care. We want to thank Judy for coming on to chat with us. If you need bank searches done or any type of difficult research, please feel free to reach out to her. We also want to thank Crosstracks, Marlin Locate, PI Institute of Education, IRB Investigation Education, and the Campbell Insurance Group for sponsoring this show. Please support our great supporters. Now, have you checked out investigatorstoolbox.com yet? Now's the time to do it. Make sure you use code PIP201836 and save $20 when you join. And you can do just that through the app, available on iOS and Android platforms. And if you have a question or a comment about the show, email Matt and Matthew S. at SatellitePI.com. You can also find him on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. We want your feedback to bring you the best shows possible, and we'll be back on Monday with a new show, so make sure you tune in and stay safe out there.